If you're new to the idea of reading classics, this video uh, is for you. Hello and welcome back to Bookish. Today I want to do a video about uh, some Victorian classic novels that I think you know you should seriously think about reading. Now, obviously these are novels that um, are novels that I think are good, novels that I've read. So there are going to be some 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 real omissions here. Uh, for instance, I'm not a big fan of Thomas Hardy, and I'm not going to have any of his novels on my list. I've never read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. I've never read Dracula. So there's some novels that you oftentimes see in Victorian, in videos about uh, where to start or books to read that are Victorian novels that are not going to be on my list. By the same token, there are not a lot of surprise books on my list here either, but these are really uh, Victorian classics that I think are worth reading, that I think would be good places to start. Some are long, some are short, but I all think that they're good and could capture the imagination of readers and be kind of a good entree point into reading Victorian literature. So the first book on my list is Silas Marner by George Eliot. This is really kind of a classic morality tale of a person who is obsessed with money and greed, whose obsession changes into something more accustomed to love, uh, and for all the tragedy and all the, you know, stuff caught up in the, in the novel and all the intricacies of the novel, it is really a beautifully told story. And while I'm not a huge George Eliot fan, uh, I do think this is a good novel, and it's short, and it's a really good introduction to the work of George Eliot. Now, a lot of long time ago, people used to be assigned to read this book in school. I don't think that's true anymore, but I do think it's a good Victorian novel. The next novel I want to talk about is actually three novels that we might as well get out of the way right up front, and those are the novels written by the Bronte sisters. There are three huge, colossally important and in many people's minds, excellent and greatest of Victorian novels. And those are the novels written by the Bronte sisters. So the first novel on the list I want to mention is my favorite. Uh, and that is uh, The Tenant of Wildfeld Hall. I saw Willow from Books and Bow did a review of this. Uh, so if I can remember, I'll leave a link to uh, their review uh, down below. But this is my favorite involving a woman named Helen Graham who has moved uh, kind of the countryside in an, into a derelict large house that she's renting. And she's an artist and she, port, she supports herself and her young son by painting uh, and selling her paintings. And uh, a young man in the neighborhood named Gilbert becomes kind of obsessed with her about learning all about her. And in the process, we learn about her too. And it is, I think, an, an extraordinary novel and just a, an absolutely great book. Uh, one that I wish more people would read. And I'm mentioning it first as the Bronte sister novel by Anne Bronte because it's the one I think that is the least likely to be read. The next Bronte sister book that's on my list is one of the great novels of all time probably and that would be Jane Eyre written by Charlotte Bronte which tells the story of essentially an orphaned young girl named uh, Jane Eyre who grows up uh, deals with a difficult family and difficult people raising her goes off to boarding school becomes an incredible becomes a governess in the home of a mysterious man uh, named uh, Mr. Rochester and you know the story kind of unfolds from that and it is beautifully written beautifully paced Jane Eyre is a great character uh, my personal opinion is that I would have been happy if Jane had stayed single and been a teacher her entire life that's not exactly what happens but it is still just an absolutely great novel and then the third Bronte sister novel I want to mention is the one I don't like at all, and that's Wuthering Heights. So I'm going to tell you up front, I do not like Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. I do not like it. I don't like Catherine. I don't like Heathcliff. I don't like that whole weird, twisted, sadistic, evil, dog-killing, you know, grave-robbing, sadistic, psycho <laughs> character. I don't like him, okay? I don't like uh, him at all. I don't like Wuthering Heights as a novel, but it is a classic, and it is a classic that so very many people like and love and think is just the greatest novel ever, and that Heathcliff is one of the great characters ever, that you really, really should read it. And, you know, many of you are going to read it and have a completely different opinion than mine, and that's fine. Uh, but I do think it is a book uh, that if you're looking at reading Victorian classics, at some point you have to deal with Wuthering Heights. 
So those, those are the three Bronte sister books I want to mention. On a much lighter note, I want to mention Barchester Towers by Anthony Trollope. Uh, this is just a delightful story of class and manners and romance um, and what's acceptable in society and the inner workings of the church of England and it is funny and it is witty and it is at the same time oftentimes touching uh, and moving in lots of ways and I just think it is a truly truly great book uh, and you know Anthony Trollope wrote I don't know 40 50 novels over the course of his life and I'm not saying you have to read any of them or all of them but this book I think is is truly great uh, and it's convinced me I want to read the rest of the Chronicles of Barcester. Uh, I'm hoping to read Small House at Allingham this year for October. Uh, but I just think it is a great book and it completely won me over to uh, Trollope. And I will continue reading Trollope probably for quite some time uh, over the course of the rest of my life. But just a, a truly great book. Now, I will say, and this isn't a book I'm officially recommending. The first book in the Chronicles of Barcester is uh, The Warden. Uh, and it's kind of seen as like an introduction to the series. I think it works in that way. Uh, the Warden is one of those books that a lot of times people find to be somewhat dull and boring, but I think it has really charming characters and it really kind of sets up the rest of the series. But if you don't want to do that, Barchester Towers is an absolutely great novel. The next book on my list is another book that's a lot lighter and I, there are a lot of people who uh, think that other books by this author are far better and far greater, and that is the novel I want to mention is Cranford uh, by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, this is, tells the story of essentially a community that is dominated by a group of older women whose friendships and relationships with one another uh, are sometimes tense, they're sometimes falling out, but they are. it is a community of women who are absolutely there for one another. Uh, and so that no matter what happens, no matter if men get introduced in the equation or you know, other things go on. It is just a, a charming story, funny in lots of occasions, and it's not really uh, very long, but I found it to be really good. Now, a lot of people recommend North and South here, I think, uh, by uh, Elizabeth Gaskell, and I read that and I didn't like it as much. Uh, but, you know, if you're looking for an alternative other than Cranford, perhaps a more substantial, longer work, then certainly you might look into North and South. Next to my list of Victorian classics that, you know, I think people should read is New Grub Street by George Gissing. George Gissing is becoming that kind of my Victorian author, I think. I've only read two books by him, The Odd Women and New Grub Street. And both of them I found to be really, really good and really, really uh, thought-provoking and entertaining. Uh, New Grub Street is the story of a writer uh, who has published one novel and is committed to publishing, you know, great works of art and literature and the struggles he faces to get his work published, to make money, to support his family, uh, the pressure that's put on him by his wife and circumstances involving his wife. There's a side story involving a young woman who is a great writer, a great intellectual, and the problems she faces in trying to be successful. And this is all contrasted then with a young man who is determined to use writing as a way just to advance himself, to make money, to marry well. Uh, and things don't work out uh, well for the characters you most admire in the novel. George Gissing, uh, I think, has also doesn't like Thomas Hardy. George Gissing doesn't write uh, a whole lot of uh, happy novels, I don't think, but uh, I think this is a great one and well worth reading. The next two books on my list are, are also books by the same author. Uh, and that is Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, went to Scotland, got to go to the Scottish Writers Museum uh, and the Stevenson floor and look around for a little while. The first novel on of Stevenson's I would recommend is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Just a really brilliantly written book. Again, a really short book uh, in which we see kind of the classic story about a man who is one way uh, most of the time and is a horrible, awful person the rest of the time. Uh, there is, uh, there's violence, there is intrigue, there are great descriptions of homes in the city and characters, and it, I found it to be remarkably modern considering its age, and so I highly recommend that. And the second book I would recommend by Robert Louis Stevenson is probably maybe as obvious as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and that is Treasure Island. Now, in the United States, and maybe this is true in England too, Treasure Island is oftentimes presented as a story for children. I really don't think it's that at all. It is the, you know, uh, perhaps the original, one of the original pirate stories uh, containing Long John Silver and lost treasure and people marooned on islands and their, you know, gun battles and all kinds of, 
you know, adventure type, type stuff happens. But I do think it is a really brilliant novel, really brilliantly paced, and one of those books I think that, that people should definitely, should definitely read. The next book on my list is the first and only book I'm going to have on my list by Charles Dickens. And this isn't because I haven't read other Dickens novels. I have. Uh, you know, I almost thought just to put he on here uh, A Christmas Carol, which is my absolute favorite story, and I love all versions of A Christmas Carol movies, but I decided to go with an actual, you know, novel and not a novella-length work. And the novel I chose is Great Expectations. Now, Great Expectations is my favorite Charles Dickens novel. I think it combines a lot of the stuff that makes Dickens novels cool, eccentric characters, kind of gothic situations. There is some humor with the characters. There's some mystery involved. There's a young man who's, or a young boy who grows up to be a young man, kind of that, you know, story of rags to riches type thing uh, going on. There's weirdness. There is, uh, you know, I'm just going to say sexual tension or at least romantic tension in the novel. I think it has a lot of the things that make Dickens novels great can be found in Great Expectations, and it is a little shorter than Bleak House or David Copperfield, two of the other Dickens novels that I've read. Uh, next on the list, if you're a sci-fi person, I think you can find a lot of uh, examples of sci-fi uh, written during, during the Victorian era. My favorite is The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Again, a really short book in which Wells imagines uh, creatures from outer space coming to Earth and essentially wrecking havoc and killing and spreading all over the place in these kind of big walking uh, robot-like spaceships and uh, humanity is under threat and having to hide out and you know our main character is there at a lot of really pivotal moments in this kind of war uh, war between these these aliens and uh, humanity and things work out in an, in a kind of unexpected way but I thought it was just really really brilliant really good example of early sci-fi and I think it's a story that that still carries on carries forward even though it's you know well over 120 years old now it is a story that I think resonates and you know one of those themes in science fiction that still comes up yeah the next book and I think this is the last book on my list is going to be The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins I put this book on the list last because it is really long I will say there's an excellent uh, audio version of this uh, on LibriVox and this is kind of one of the original detective stories it's told primarily in an epistolary fashion where people are writing letters and you can, you're reading these letters. But it essentially involves the theft and the consequences of theft of a stone from India, of a precious stone from India. And it's an incredibly involved kind of mystery about, you know, who stole this, this stone, who stole this precious uh, gem. Uh, and it is, you know, really involving, really, I think, brilliant characters. It's got the whole spooky house thing down. It's got the whole eccentric uh, housekeeper or butler kind of character thing down. It's got all kinds of multi-layered characters and all kinds of potential suspects. And, you know, for a really early kind of detective story, I think it, it works uh, really, really well. There's also, you know, a detective whose name I've just kind of forgotten, who's kind of one of the early uh, prototypes or archetypes of detectives and detective fiction is in it. And it is long, and so maybe the, the audiobook is the way to go, but I thought it was really just a, just a brilliant novel. Okay, so there you go. There are Victorian novels that I think everyone should read, particularly if you're one of those people who is interested in looking at a way to get into reading Victorian literature. I think that these, I think it was 12 books, would be a great place. Any of these 12 books would be a great place to start. Anyway, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you for watching.